Welcome back to this, the fifth installment of my uh, mini lathe overhauling. When I last left you I was just getting set up to turn the number three Morse taper on the test bar. I'm using this drill chuck number three mandrel to dial in the taper on the top slide. When I looked at this mandrel last time it seemed there was pretty bad run out down at this end with the uh, with its center drill. I had a look, it was pretty dirty, so I've cleaned it out now and apart from the rust, it looks like this is really quite accurate. It seems, with a bit of scatter due to rust, it seems to max out at only about two ten thousandth of run out. So that's good. So that's that angle now dialed in. I've had to remove my face plate because the diameter was simply too large. I'm just using a normal chuck back plate with a bolt through it as a drive arm. Well, Bob, this is not going to work. To be able to clear the uh, back gear lever over this side, at the end of travel of the um, Morse taper, which is about here, I would need such a ridiculous stick out on the tool, there's no way in hell that's going to be rigid. So I'm going to have to come up with a better solution. This is plan B. I'll turn down this end just for 10, 10 millimeters, minor diameter of the Morse taper. I'll then have to print up another um, drive dog for the 20 millimeters and flip it around and cut the taper down on the driven end, down on the headstock end. Another 2.7 millimeters to go. Yeah, having the top slide cantilevered so far back from the center line means there's obviously a lot of a lot of flex in rotation here. All of the play in the saddle comes into play here. So I'm getting a, a distinct chamfer as it rides up, loads up, and twists the whole setup. So I'll need to try and preload that a bit as we get closer to the final cuts. Okay, by preloading a bit with the hand before it started the cut, I'm not getting that taper in the shoulder, so that's an improvement. This drive dog works really well. I just need to adjust the diameter and make a second one. And this time, I'll also add a drive arm to it. This is now the second lathe dog I've made. You can see this time I've put a, a, a leg off, an extra leg on it, so I can use a much shorter bolt to drive it. Now, this is obviously uh, going to be loaded along the striations of the of the 3D print, so it may well be too weak. In which case, this le this extra dog leg may break off. Uh, worst case, I'll just put the longer bolt back in. After I adjusted the top slide, I'm now getting contact here. That's one of the issues with this bolly, is that because the top slide's mounted quite low with quite large ball handles, uh, you do tend to get interference when doing weird angles. I did have a discussion today on the um, CNC Ecker, the German forum, about my use of uh, rubber gloves while working with machines. Uh, the gloves I'm using are only the extremely thin nitrile gloves, sort of what doctors would wear. They don't have a lot of strength to them. I do also use barrier cream, which I feel is important to keep the keep hydrocarbons from getting absorbed into the skin. One thing I do notice is I quite often forget to take my ring off, which is an absolute no-go with uh, working on machine tools. Set up now this way, I can turn the taper up to that lathe dog and 
it works with the normal top slide motion and I don't have to overhang the tool any amount. Another advantage of the plastic lathe dog is it doesn't really matter if I hit it. I'll do a first fit up and see how that tape is looking in the in the bore of the spindle. I'm going to blow up this taper and see how the fit is. Okay, it feels like the angle is too steep because there's wiggle at the back and it seems tight at the front. Okay, no, there's obviously one high spot. Well, glad, glad I blued it because that's totally different to what it felt like. I'll do the finishing cut with one of these highly positive aluminium cutting inserts. Nicely. Well, that's already looking better. There's still a bit of a high spot there, but it has slightly improved. There's still that wiggle. There's a close up of the surface finish. There's a few little marks in it, but generally it feels very nice and smooth. The tape is polished up really nicely. I've now got pretty even contact throughout. I could cut it down a fair bit smaller to get more insertion into the, into the headstock. Although, to be honest, there's not going to be any loads on it other than a, than a dial test indicator running along it. So I think I might try it just with this as it is. Next thing to do will be turn this, turn down the outer diameter to size and see how well it works. That was a fresh uh, insert with a larger nose radius, a 0 0.04 rather than a 0 0.02. Uh, and the surface finish started off a lot better but no, no, it feels, it feels quite good along the whole bar. So let's measure it. I've taken a first roughing pass across the bar. So if I zero on this end, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got a pretty severe taper. Nearly 0 0.17 of a millimetre taper along the bar. So I'm going to need to offset the tailstock to um, take that taper out. I need to push that tailstock over to the back about seven one hundredths of a millimeter. That should reduce the diameter by fourteen one hundredths, which is about the error I'm car I currently have. So at the moment, it's fatter at the tailstock end than at the headstock end. I've never set over the tailstock on this lathe before, but it looks like this bolt here locks the upper and lower castings together, and then there's a screw function on the back to actually adjust the sideways travel, which is very tight. This probably hasn't been touched in years. So I'll lock that down, do another cut, and see what the taper now looks like. Eight two, mm, five eight. Okay, so I still got a massive taper on there. Okay, that's obvious. I adjusted the tailstock in the wrong direction. We were too fat at this end. By moving the tailstock back, I made the radius. It made it for an even larger radius. So I need to correct forward 
the seven tenths, whoops, wrong direction, the seven tenths I screwed up, seven or eight, and then another, let's call it 15. At least this adjustment's very easy on this lathe and feels quite nice and precise if you go the right way. Is it just me or do you all hate machining stainless as well? Twenty-six, twenty-four, twenty-six. Twenty-four, twenty-six. I'll change to the micrometer and just check that. Okay, so it looks like I'm within about four microns. Okay, well it looks like we're within about a hundredth of a millimeter, then that's good enough to start lapping. After I first 3D printed the lathe dog, Bob on the Linux CNC forum suggested, hey, why don't you try 3D printing a lap? And anyway, I I mentioned, mentioned that on the madmodder.net forum where a guy Jules took that idea and ran with it and already tried it out and it seems to work quite well. So now I've uh, 3D printed up this lab to, to work on our test bar here. very flexible, a lot of flexures in it. It seems that the bar is about the same diameter at the each end, but has a slight spherical shape, so it's a bit thicker in the middle. Max is out at about 11 or 12 microns thicker through the middle here. If I understood Jules correctly, he alternated uh, paper and emery cloth in the slots of the, of the lap, with the paper holding the oil and the abrasive as it comes loose from the sandpaper which go in the alternate pieces. So we'll give that a go and see how that works out. Starting off with 600 grit sandpaper. Now this the hard part is getting it on the... getting it started. Might have been easier to have mounted the lap onto the end of the bar first. Now the use of the 600 grit sandpaper has already taken out all of the machining marks so the next, next task is going to be trying to bring this down to a nice even, even dimension. We've got a, a little bit of a lump here and a little bit of a lump through here. I'll do one more pass with the 600 grit sandpaper and then we'll start looking at dropping down to uh, finer grits. I'm now lapping with 1000 grit paper and I've got uh, from a zero here plus 3 microns, plus 4, plus 6, plus 3, plus 3, plus 1, plus 2. So we're getting there. I'd like to aim to be within 2 microns over the entire length of the test bar. Let's see if I can achieve that. I've just reloaded the lap with 2000 grit sandpaper now. Um, the deviation's down to about 5 microns. There's a little bit of a bump still through this area. Uh, everything else is within 2. So hopefully I'll do a final polishing, concentrate on this area and try and get the whole bar within 2 microns. Getting down into these tolerances, I also have to start wondering, worrying about the uh, temperature. Um, it slowly warms up as you lap, so sometimes I have to stop, let it cool down before I can measure. 
I'm going to call that test bar finished uh, before I go crazy trying to chase these last last microns. Uh, it becomes very very subjective once you get down you know with a very slight change in feel with the speed you move the ratchet can make quite you know can make that difference of that last micron or not so as you can see we're at zero zero minus one plus two one zero one and that's uh, as good as it's going to get I'd say Another mod I did years ago was to mill out the saddle on the uh, to make more space for a larger nut. When I replaced the original lead screw with a trapezoid screw with brass nuts. Let's take a look at the bed hold down screws. The moment they're all four are loose, and as I so the first one pulls the head out of alignment, as does the second. So the back rear head mount screw doesn't pull the head out of alignment, so that means the headstock must be sitting on the bed in that spot. The front of the headstock, back of the bed. That one also barely barely changes anything. Two one hundredths of total indicated run out at the chuck end. Um, about two one hundredths climb from the chuck end up to the tailstock end over two hundred millimeters, and another probably three. One hundredths of run out out at that end. The horizontal alignment is much worse. So from zero at the headstock end, it's pointing nearly a tenth of a millimeter over 200 millimeters uh, forward towards the tailstock end, which means I'm going to need to scrape this front corner of the of the V way and the opposite rear corner to try and rotate the rotate the headstock back into alignment. At this stage I'm not going to worry about the horizontal alignment because when I once I start mucking around with the the, the V-way I'm sure I'm going to screw that up anyway and then have to try and fix that later. I think that's a good place to finish for this week so once again thanks a lot for watching um, if you like what you see please subscribe please hit like and yeah, I look forward to making the next episode for you.